this movie came together via a Twitter DM, I understand. You you sent a DM to Jeremy. Well, he was, I was like, well, who, who's the kid? Who do you want to be the kid? And he was like, you know, our first choice, our only choice is Jeremy Pope. And so I just was like, it can't hurt. And I was like, hey. <laughs> Uh, last night, you debuted your feature directorial debut, inspired not just by a true story, but by your true story. Kind of describe for me the emotion of last night and why now was the right time to put this movie out there. Uh, for me, this is a story about a young man who's trying to win back the love of his mother and ultimately understands that he, he needs to respect himself. And that's my story. Um, and it's important for me to tell it right now because I feel like we're in a moment where you know, there's a lot of gay homeless youth. We're a country that's very much divided. And I wanted to show how I learned the value of the person to my left and my right through my ability to protect the person to my left and my right. And I'm hoping that the people who watch this movie will learn that value as well. Jeremy, tell me about that experience, though, of knowing that you're stepping into um, your, your, your now director friend's story in his shoes and, and uh, you know, obviously wanting to do that justice. Right. Yeah. You know, I, it's like, I think if anything, it's just I, had, I wanted to be very precious with the experience and the time that we had together um, because he was my writer, my director and, you know, the, the life and the lens I was kind of looking into and then taking up for my, for, you know, for, for my own interpretation, if you will. But it was just about making space, making space for him to feel safe. You know, I wanted him to feel like he could trust me with anything and everything, because ultimately that was my responsibility, was for a moment to carry some of that and hopefully provide him some healing. So, you know, while I hope the, the you know, the film resonates with everyone, for me, I wanted it to resonate for him because I, I was hoping that as we take steps forward, he could leave a part of the hurt and the pain behind because he told his story in this way. They kicked you out, didn't they? My mom, she won't even talk to me. Most of my friends are dead or in jail. If I die in this uniform, I'm a hero to somebody. And Gabrielle, for you as well, you know, that challenge of playing Inez and, and playing this very fraught relationship between this mother and son. How did you first approach finding your way into that story while also, of course, wanting to, you know, pay homage to Elegance's mother? I think going back to the beginning and trying to figure out a way in to a, 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 a very complicated woman. Um, what do we have in common when I, I would assume not a damn thing. Uh, but when you are constantly chasing worthiness, you will lose yourself and everything is on the table and you don't always make the best decisions. Uh, and that was the commonality. Um, it didn't manifest itself in my life by rejecting my children, but it's manifested in other ways. And so we had that in common. It, it feels like the work is ongoing so it's like we, we wrapped a long time ago, but the work and the healing and the finding it and the discovering who we are through character is ongoing. Um, conversations I had last night after the film with my husband, just re-examining what more we can do, not only for in our own household, but how can we shift how we reach people, you know? Um, and I'm still finding it through the work. Elegance, this film and your military service took place in the time of Don't Ask, Don't Tell um, in, in the military. And it's not a, an era that's explored very much, if ever, before in Hollywood history. What is it like getting a chance to kind of open people's eyes to what it was really like to serve at that time? It's an extreme honor to be able to tell the stories of queer veterans like myself. There, for most of our country's history, we were forced to be silent and to suffer in silence. And I always say, you know, the film is 
100% autobiographical when it comes to the fears, desires, and motivations. But some of the situations are composite situations that I've heard in podcasts, YouTube videos, friends of mine who've served and you know really had a horrible outcome because they got dishonorably discharged for being gay. So not only do I get to tell their story, but I get to say a gay man serves with honor and is accepted within the military with honor. And that's just, I know a lot of people are gonna be lifted by that. Have you been convicted of a felony? Are you communist? 16, 15, 14, 17. Are you now, have you ever been a homosexual? No, sir! I will break you. I promise. And Gabrielle, this is an opportunity for you to really demonstrate that range and go to a darker place than, than we have seen you before. What was it like to have Elegance see that in you and know that you had um, this ability to go there? Terrifying. When someone sees something in you that you don't see in yourself, you can feel very exposed and painfully vulnerable. Because when I read it, I was like, ooh, that's dark. And he's like, you're perfect. I'm like, <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> but, but he saw beyond the public face and he believed in my ability. And he called upon me to step up and be the actress that I know I can be, that I never allowed myself to be. Watching these two embody yourself and your mother, and obviously this film is dedicated to her. Um, I, I understand she passed during the, the making of this movie. I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, what was it like being on the other end of that camera? What was the moment of being on the other end of that camera that was the most impactful for you? Okay. I knew this was coming, so I'm not going to cry. Um, okay, so... There's a scene towards the end of the movie in, in the hallway. And um, I mean, like I said, it's based off of my life. It's autobiographical in terms of desires, fears, motivations. Every scene between Jeremy and Gabby was ripped directly from my life. And um, my mother used to tell me things in her mental illness, like, you know, you were, I could have left you in a shoebox. I could have done this, I could have done that, you, you know, and it always made me feel like it was true like when she said it and then ended up being homeless after it. And I really, really believed when it was happening that I was destined for bad things because my mother didn't think that I deserved to be alive. And when we're in that hallway and I heard those lines being said over and over again, and Jeremy you know, turns to her and says, I'm never giving up on you. Uh, us, I never gave up on me and my mom, never, not once. And I can't tell you really in words how empowering it was, only that it was empowering to get to the end of that day and to get in my car and to drive back to my hotel and to be a director now, right? When it was said to me when I was 16, I was nobody's child, you know? When it said to me on that set, I'm okay now. So I got something out of me that um, I've been carrying around for a long time. 